And now there's another means of electric transport. It's the Shinkansen, the new star of Japan's railways. Running at a commercial speed that's remarkable at the time, 210 kilometers per hour. But the Shinkansen is not comparable to the French trains because it's a shuttle with magnetic levitation. The cars lift thanks to powerful magnets. However, this vision of modern transport adds to the image of the train as being hopelessly outmoded. A minister at the time said, the train is finished. But the French engineers are determined to take up the challenge and to strike a big blow to reverse the trend. A lot of engineers went to see what was being done in Japan with the Shinkansen system, and that helped a lot to broaden views. Since on December 21, 1971, the Japanese train reaches 517 kilometers per hour, an incredible speed. Yet it's achieved on a special monorail track, while in France, tracks have to accommodate freight trains, and there are even still sections for classic trains. It's evident, however, that the race for speed is now run on a worldwide scale. And so, new technologies are called for. To compete in the race, it takes nothing less than a brand new train. However, it must comply with two requirements. It has to be 100% electric, so that it doesn't depend on rising oil prices. And it must be able to run at very high speeds every day. Yet the engineers don't have to look far to find the answer. All it needs is the TGV with a new formula, without its helicopter turbine and re-equipped with a pantograph. In other words, a TGV 2.0. It's the one we know today, a train imagined almost 50 years ago. Yet to run it at 250 kilometers per hour every day, there is an obligation. There has to be a difference of 150 to 200 kilometers per hour between the record speed of trains and the commercial speed. If you want a train that runs comfortably at 260 kilometers per hour and well within safety margins, you have to prove that the train can go over 380 kilometers per hour without any problems. The margin is required to reassure not only the officials, but also future passengers. So once again, the race is on. The bar is set at 100 meters per second. The project is christened TGV 100. To prepare for the new speed record, not only will the train be profoundly modified, but the track too. Since the electric current coming from the power stations is going to jump from the traditional 1,500 to 25,000 volts. To guarantee such a powerful electric current all along the line, you have to build substations at a distance of 50 kilometers. These small bases will adapt and reduce the gross power sent by the central station. For the high-speed line between Paris and Lyon, control and management of the substations is done from Paris. Here they check that the intensity of the power supply from the small copper wire is constant. The catenary receives a current 20 times more powerful than before. But it also must be adapted to the specific conditions of a record run, because the engineers anticipate a problem. The pantograph, by pressing on the catenary at high speeds, will create a ripple in the copper wire. It's a phenomenon dreaded by engineers. If the pantograph catches up with the undulation, it will lose contact with the copper wire and only hit it intermittently. If you tear off the catenary, it means disaster. So how do you make the catenary lift as little as possible and stay in constant contact with the pantograph? On a high-speed line, the catenary is stretched to 2,600 decanewton. That's almost twice the tension on a conventional line. The counterweights on the masts are increased to further stiffen the structure that holds the catenary an indispensable process. The infrastructure on the ground is modified too, since the old 30-meter rails cause a shock each time the train passes over a weld. The whole system is therefore redesigned. 
We now manufacture rails that are almost 300 meters long and are delivered by special trains. These bars are assembled using a special technique. They're welded with aluminium. The result is a rail without any intermediate mechanical joint. The disadvantage of extremely long rails is that when temperatures rise, they tend to bend upwards along their entire length. So we chose very heavy rails, weighing 60 kilograms per meter, so they won't lift. With a target speed of 380 kilometers per hour, the infrastructure around the train has been rethought to correspond to the laws of physics. Yet no railbound train has ever approached the speed of the record envisaged. It's a leap into the unknown. The whole country has its eyes riveted on the record attempt. It's like launching a rocket in the horizontal. The tension mounts. In the car behind the driver, there are engineers to observe and retrieve the information provided by the train itself. Of course, the train was loaded with sensors, as during all the previous runs. On February 26, 1981, the TGV 100 gets rolling. For conductor Jacques Ries, going for the 380 km per hour is beyond anything he's done before. In the cabin, you have a threshold at 170 where you can see that the train's accelerating. Then you have another one at 210 and again at 280. However, Jacques Ruiz is not alone. Engineers and managers are present to assist the driver. On the photos, they tell me I look tense. But when you're going that fast, you can't let yourself be distracted by people in the cabin.